When I first heard this clip, it was originally going to be a YouTube short, but I really wanted to keep the context of this because it's so indicative, not just actually of New Testament Christian churches, but a lot of churches. And so uh, I'll let you hear what he has to say first at the beginning here, and then we'll cut in. I said earlier, thank you for your giving supporting there's some that need to support the work of god one of the greatest things you can do with your finances is give the portion to god that he requires not that a pastor requires a bishop minister elder but what the lord requires according to his word this is a, a point of contention for me a big big point of contention um, and that is, I've mentioned it before, I grew up in the Catholic Church. I never understood the big buildings, the ostentatious ornateness of it all. And here they seem to have a very nice place in Memphis. Uh, seemingly, when I looked on Google, more than one building, which he makes reference to here. And so <laughs> he's talking about giving money to the work of the Lord. Is, is the work of God supposed to be to maintain buildings to give to that is that what it is was that even a thing then no it was not I'll answer that for you this has become a thing so all the things that were said do these things you don't even have to have a building you you can you can make this such an organic great experience that actually caters to people and their lifestyles but instead they make this homestead they make this building here we're going to plant it in this place and you by golly are going to come to this place when we decide that we want to open the doors <laughs> and we're going to tell you that you need to pay us to have all these things that now he's going to mention and God blesses everything that we give to him. This week, we're going to have a new AC unit installed in the office. This grabbed my attention. I had to rewind it a couple times to make sure I heard what he said. Air conditioning for the office. Hmm. Wondering how many people that serves. Um, if you look at the picture here of how big this little complex is, um, I'm sure there's other places where there's air conditioning. Listen to how much money it's going to cost them. It went out last summer and uh, I tried to, not that we could not have had it done at the time, but I tried to endure it and then moved to another building. <laughs> Trying to endure it. It's not that we, I had to go through that, though. it's not that I had to, okay? But uh, anyway, it was a choice, and so we're getting ready to have it, our new AC unit or in office, installed in the office. It's only about $5,000, that's all. $5,000 worth of, I assume, giving, since that's the context here, to air conditioning in an office, which the people in the church do not benefit from. Now, I know what NTCC might say. They might say, well, God wants you to take care of the pastor. You know what's not a smart move? Is buying all these buildings, getting all these mortgages, paying all the insurance on it, and then requiring strangers and people who come and stumble into your church and sit there for a while and become a member being... Um, being coerced into giving so you can pay five thousand dollars for air conditioning in an office and i want to just say here you know to be fair there may be people that say what's wrong with that that's fine my opinion is after having watched i mean we can go back and watch all kinds of pastors 
preachers, teachers in this organization who are begging for money over the pulpit to pay for things. Wait, wait till you hear next what he's going to say. And one more thing. This came out in May 2020. Hmm, what was going on in May 2020? That was at least two months into lockdowns, which were only supposed to be two weeks, end up being how long? The pressure on people to, um, to make money, to be able to work at a job, many, many, many lost their jobs, and I'm one of them. Uh, I mean, I have a good story three years later, but <laughs> you are living those uh, at least two, two and a half years not knowing what in the world you're going to do. You do the best you can. You scrape along. You probably tap into every bit and scrap of savings you have. You pull together as families. But here this dude is. At the start of this pandemic, when everything was an unknown, and he's talking about paying $5,000 to put an air conditioner in an office in a church building. Go sit in your living room and type. <laughs> Bring your files in there. Everything's digital pretty much anyway, right? How? I, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. If somebody wants to explain it to me, how this is cool, <laughs> pun unintended, how this is what the Bible meant, because if that's the case, everything has to be looked at. Everything. There were no all of this. Let's have church. Let's go to church. But we are the church. Let's have a church building. And, and how is any of this servicing one member? How is it? Let's hear this part again. It was a choice. And so we're getting ready to have it, our new AC unit or an office installed in the office. It's only about $5,000. That's all. On the part after this, I heard like almost zero shouting from the church members over air conditioning unit for $5,000 in the office. <laughs> Give to the work of God, program of God. <laughs> Someone wondered, well, where, where did the finances go? Well, now I've heard a lot of clips and maybe you have not, but I will tell you, whenever a pastor from this organization uses the voice of someone asking a question about almost anything uh, that's one of their pet doctrines, but most especially about where does the money go, they make them sound like an idiot. Oh, where does the money go? People ask, where does the money go, pastor? We've got about a million dollar property, and so it, it goes a few places. <laughs> they should say right to his face, and that's my problem because... You know, there's places that don't even have insurance. We have insurance. We have over a million dollars, a million dollars of insurance on our place. He steps back as if it's like a drop mic moment. Like, you want to know where the money goes? Here it goes. Step back. Drop the mic. I answered it. I shut you down. No, it just sounds really irresponsible, really. Because the insurance company says it would cost over a million dollars to rebuild this. Thank God for what he does. Amen. Then we're going to spend a, a few thousand dollars more. And one brother's really pushing it. He's really been focused on it for a long time. I so uh, here's a little clue as to the atmosphere this man has created. He's saying uh, this brother has been praying about 
what he's about to say. And so on top of the $5,000 for the air conditioning in the office, they're going to spend a couple more thousand dollars during the lockdown on what? What could it be that this one brother is really praying about? This brother is really focused on it. It's really important to him. He's praying. So that gives the um, implication that God is leading this whole thing. The $5,000 plus let's throw in, it's not a couple more thousand. He said, I just rewound it, a few thousand more, a few thousand thousand more. So you're thinking to yourself, wow, it must be some sort of special outreach to the world. Um, what are they going to do? I've been focused on it, praying about it, but he's been in there with me, my wife, and maybe some of you, but we're going to have that steeple painting. Hallelujah. My jaw dropped when I heard that. Now, Again, I may be guilty of being in my own little insula, insula, ah, insula, in, <laughs> my own little world. <laughs> it's hard to talk late at night sometimes. <laughs> Maybe I'm in my own little world where I'm so in tune and my ears perk up when I hear about all the ways that these people want to spend money. It, it would be like, to quote Davis, in one of his great many quotes, it would be like shooting fish in a barrel to go through all of the different uh, streamings of these pastors begging for money for things that have absolutely nothing to do with the ministry they can say all they want oh but it's a it's making a nice place and it, it looks like we care to people we paint the steeple <sighs> who sees that i mean seriously it's mm, it's may 2020 <laughs> and they want people to give money paint the steeple. So now we have a steeple, which is way up on top of this building. And that did garner a big, big hallelujah. It could have been uh, Pastor Crane's wife or one of the ladies there who's very fixated on things being very clean and gleaming. I don't know. But it's not for the Lord. I'm sorry. It is not. I don't think if he was there in that service, he'd be like, what a waste. What a waste of money. Am I saying never paint things, clean things, maintain things? Absolutely not. But here's the thing. Why are these big buildings a player anyway? Why? Why? These people in this church are so fixated on outward things, it blows my mind whole. They judge people by the outward appearance. They want you to come into their churches. They all have to have the light up cross. They all have to have the nice lectern. They all have to have a curtain over the piano so you don't see that ugly part. They have screens up. Oh, wait, there's more coming. Hold on. Praise the Lord. We're going to see a victory, Pastor. We're going to see it. Give to the work of the Lord. Before you pay any other bill, according to God, not Pastor Crane, I'm not after your money. Uh, yeah, dude, you kind of are after their money. You just spent... How much time of this service, how much you spent talking about money for an air conditioner in an office that maybe none of them will ever see? Maybe, maybe you'll walk them through and let them feel it one time. You're telling them about money for a steeple 
And you know, I'm sorry, I have to put this all in context. We're at the beginning of these unsure, very scary lockdowns because it's way past the two week mark. And we could watch the news and see where this thing was going. And so isn't this the time to, um, to put some care about the people who you are asking these crazy things to do? Why not use the money and say, we're going to put it aside. We don't know what's going to happen with everything. And we want to be a blessing to some people. Maybe help them pay their bills or something or do something. Uh, maybe we'll have some dinners here at the church. Because we have like a little compound here. We can surely do this. No. You don't hear anything about that. And I don't even care if towards the end of the service, like I, I couldn't even get past this first part. This is where he's at. This is what he's leading with. This is what's important to him and to many other preachers in this organization. I won't say all of them because I don't believe it's all of them. Because I've seen some of their services. And you can tell those who are not this type. And Crane's been around a while. So he's got that Gandhi way about him. They're just going to come out and say it. They don't even care. It's not the people's problem that you have a big property. Boo-hoo on you. Stop being the waving pastor and go make some money. There's plenty of people doing it. That's going to be the next video, actually, is about all the preachers on LinkedIn. Which is where I found Crane, which is where when... This is how this whole thing came about. I was in the middle of another video and I saw that he was on LinkedIn as the waving pastor. I was like, what is that? And my daughter knew about it. She's like, oh yeah, that's what he does. He waves. So if you go, I went over to his Facebook page and you could see the video about the waving and how it all started and everything. And then I just happened to see this message as I scrolled through. And I was like, hmm, what's this about? And then I got sidetracked. But it fits in because it is a part of the DNA of this organization. Money spent on the most idiotic aesthetics that are not important. I just, I don't know. I care about you. We love you. I preached to people for years, didn't pay tithe and give an offering. What does that have to do with the love of God for the soul, trying to bring them to Christ? You get saved, you pay 10%, give an offering, and matter of fact, you give yourself. Because I gave myself to Jesus, he has my wallet also. Okay. Everything got saved on them but their wallet. <laughs> they took their wallet out and they said, God saved me. But anyway, that's not possible. And so, the, as I said earlier, the steeple. And then I wanted to say that Sherwin Williams, or someone had talked to them over probably about a year ago, and uh, God giving us favor, they knowing the work that we do, whatever, however that all it worked out, however God worked it all out. But Sherwin Williams is donating the paint to us. Ooh, people like to blame God for a lot of things. I have a very difficult time believing that there's a God in the universe who wants who wants people to love him, come into his family, be taken care of. And so with all of the hurting and with all of the need, 
he lays on the heart of some guy at Sherwin Williams to donate paint for a steeple. I'm sorry, I can't go with you there, waving pastor. I just can't. It does something inside of me. It's like how, how out of touch? I mean, that's the question you have to ask all the time about these people. This is why you need to stay away, far, far away. They paint steeples. They get new air conditioners and offices. And hang on, there's one more thing in this message. So that saves us on the paint bill. It saves on the paint bill, but you still have to tie the increase, remember. And the man that's doing the work said, well, while we have the lift, the boom, the lift, we'll also uh, take care of other areas of the church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Beautify the house. There is nothing that I have ever found about building buildings and that you should keep it beautified. I honestly think there's more concern for people and their situations and their needs and their personal crises being tended to by these supposed pastors, ministers. There's a lot of things. And last Sunday, and uh, don't worry, everything you give, you want to give a special offering besides your tithe and offerings like someone did last Sunday. They pay tithe, they're giving an offering. God dealt with them. I just mentioned that we're going to be uh, buying screens, taking care of the multimedia. God dealt with this man after Crane just happened to mention that they want to buy screens for multimedia. Which we now see, uh, I don't know if there was pressure put on everyone. Why all of a sudden would every single church have, um, have some sort of monitor or what he's calling a screen? And uh, right there in the service, they wrote a check for $1,000. No problem. Now, we're listening to this in hindsight, which is 2020. But I wonder, what would you think had you been sitting in that service? So now you've heard that they have $5,000 to pay for the air conditioning in the office. They have a few thousand to do the steeple, pay for the lift and whatever all else, the labor and all. And now uh, someone drops a check on them for $1,000 for screens, for screens. Why are screens needed? Why? It's aesthetics. It is outward appearance. It has nothing at all to do with, with putting forth the gospel and a mission to save souls. Please tell me how it is. Please. God told them to and they did it. Now, I wasn't there. <laughs> I did not. I cannot confirm nor deny whether God told this man to give a thousand dollars of his money to a church so they could get screens. Do you believe that? Do you honestly believe that? Please step back from this whole NTCC experience if you are living within it. You have to step back for a moment and hear how it sounds to everyone else, including church members. They're not under the same pressure from Graham to do this and do that and do this this way and that way. And if you do it this way, it works. It works. God will bless. If you just put up some screens, paint that steeple. And so... And, uh, whatever people do, and why can, can they do that course? Whatever you want to do. I've spent so much money before I got saved, I spent a lot of money wasted on sin. 
And the same is true the other way, Mr. Crane, is you can waste a whole lot of money in what you believe under the direction and the goading of a preacher to his church members telling them all this stuff. Oh, we really have a need. We have a need. We know how it works. We've been there. We've done that. Telling them, yeah, you certainly you can give. Certainly you can do that. God wants you to. He wants you to be blessed. You know, just because people get saved and give their money. Uh, I was cautioned actually by Tanya Keckle one time. Because any money that I got my hands on when I was up in Graham, I spent it on children's church. And there was a time, I don't remember the situation, where um, she had done something nice for me. I'll say the Keckles did something nice for us. By, or maybe, uh, I think I think I know what it was now. But anyway... Um, she gave me some money and said, do not use it on children's church. Because even though we claim to be saved and we're spending our money on what we consider to be the work of God and a good thing, it's not always that way. And actually, sometimes it can actually, um, how many times can I say actually? <laughs> a lot. It the situation when you have money and you believe you're giving it or using it for the work of God, it can be something where you are actually shirking other responsibilities and duties. And I, I believe that duties. Why do I always laugh when I hear the word duty, duties, duty head? Okay, it's getting late. And so I remembered that because, you know, um, I've told people before and, I, and, and I've spoken with my daughters too about it, that not every single moment within this group was um, something we look back on as something 100% awful. A lot of good things happen while there. And even among the people that we feel are coercive and manipulative and they choose who they want to be nice to, you know, we've seen the opposite side of that coin. We've seen the humiliation they've exacted on people. We've seen the awful things they've said about people without without knowing the whole story. So here he can say, yeah, that sounds good. That makes for great preaching. Oh, I spent this kind of money and that kind of money when I was a sinner. I didn't care. And it's a, it's something to put in people's heads. Yeah. You know, they'll think me too. Oh, let me pull out my wallet and just now go excessive the other way. And who does that help? To have the air conditioning. Yes, I'm going to keep saying it. The air conditioning, the steeple, and the screens. And whatever else he wants. I have no idea. To no profit. Maybe none of you, but anyway, I did. <laughs> Thank God for salvation. Amen. Right? And then even, even wasted money after that until God helped me. And I learned how to handle finances. AKA <laughs> office air conditioning steeple screens. Okay. 